this problem. I do not like this problem. It keeps sort of haunting me. I had this last year, I had this during a test over the summer, and I have this on this final test. And every single time, ever since I saw the proof the first time, I've always like known like a general idea of how it goes, but the details in the second paragraph get really messy. And it's just, it's, it's very difficult to have to do this on an exam. And it's, it's not fun. This is not a fun problem. This would be a fun problem if, like, if, if math were something that you could just sort of explore on your own and, like, sort of discover, like, all the cool things about it. But no, you have to, uh, the, the only, the only way to actually do it is to actually take classes and stuff where you have to take exams. So... So if you're given this on an exam, the only way to be able to do this is to have done it beforehand and have done it enough times that you remember how to do it. There's no way that you are... I mean, maybe there is a way that you can come up with this on an exam, but I would. I don't think I would ever get to that point. So to prove that A is a prime ideal, suppose we have two elements which are not in this ideal. We want to prove that their product is not in the ideal. So that's a sort of a backwards, that's a contrapositive to the condition of being prime. So if what X and Y are not in A, um, go away. These two ideals are equal. That's, I guess you would have to prove that. I would like to go into the details of proving that. Well, maybe I won't like it, but I think it would be useful to see, but on an ex on an on a test you can't do that. Anyways, this is an ideal which properly contains a because it contains x. Therefore, this must okay because uh, a is an ideal such that every ideal properly containing it is finitely generated. So therefore, this ideal must be finitely generated. Let's call it this generated by x and a one through a n. Now you may want to say that a1 through an are the elements which generate a, but that is not necessarily true. Um, so now define b as the set of elements in the set of elements in the ring such that multiplying x by that element puts you in a. So they're sort of like things that take x to a. I claim it's an ideal. Um, I, I think this has a special name, and so you can sort of appeal to, like, a general ring theory thing that people are supposed to know that um that this is an ideal, but if you want to prove it, take two elements in there and R and they there. AX and BX will both be in A, um, since, um, since A and B are. So their sum is this, well, that's an A, so therefore... A plus B is in there, and then since A is commutative, R of AX is A of R of X. It's not really using, it is using commutativity. Now this belongs to A since R of X is in there, so B is an ideal. Now we want to prove that X, Y is not in A. So assume for contradiction that X, Y is in A. Um, now, f from before, certainly A is going to be contained in B. Um, and just, just by looking at this condition, and also since x is contained in b but not in a, we know that this inclusion is proper, and so therefore b itself is finitely generated as well. Let's say it's generated by b1 through bm. Now choose any element a and a, then a is in this ideal as well because this ideal contains fancy a. That means that we can write a as a linear combination of the generators x and the ai's um, and so we have constants that give us the sum so now if we rewrite this we have cx as being this difference but both of these are elements of a and so this is an a so therefore c times x is an a which is what it means for c to be in b by this condition here that that means that we can write c as a sum of cj primes bj's for some of these coefficients. That's because B is gen generated by the BIs or the BJs. So anyways, 
a is equal to, now we write it as this sum, but we take the cx here and replace it with this sum over here. So we got the sum of the cj prime bjx plus this thing, and therefore a is in the ideal generated by this. So it's for every single a in the ideal, and therefore this ideal is contained in this one. Now, every single ai is obviously going to be in a by our choice of the ais. Wait. Why is that? Is that necessarily true? If a particular AI is not an A, then it must be in a, the ideal generated by X. And so, well, if it's, if it's in the ideal generated by x, then it wouldn't be part of this generating set. So therefore, each ai is an a. Um, and bjx is an a as well by the definition of b. Because if, b, if bjx is an a, or, or if, b is in, if, b is in, if bj is in b, that means that bj times x is an a. That's what it means. Therefore, this ideal is generated by a bunch of things which are contained in the ideal A, and therefore this is contained in there, therefore we have equality. Um, so A is finitely generated. That contradicts the fact that it's not finitely generated, therefore it cannot be the case that um, way up here, where we assume for contradiction that XY is an A, this cannot hold, therefore XY is not an A, and hence A is prime, and that's the first part. Now, there's the other claim. All right, so we want to prove that A is nodelian if and only if every prime ideal is finitely generated. So one direction is easy. If A is nodelian, then every ideal of A is finitely generated. So in particular, every prime ideal is finitely generated. So now we want to prove uh, for the other direction, we're going to prove the contrapositive, i.e. if A is not nodelian, then it is not the case that every ideal of A is finite then it is not the case that every prime ideal is finitely generated. So suppose that A is not Noetherian, let I be the set of ideals of A and J be the set of ideals of A which are not finitely generated. A is not Noetherian and therefore J cannot be empty because if J is not empty, that means that there are ideals which are not finitely gen that If J is empty, then there are no ideals which are not finitely generated meaning that all ideals are finitely generating, meaning that A is Noetherian, but that's, that contradicts what we've assumed here. All right, so J is not empty, um, and it's partially ordered by inclusion, so we want to do a Zorn's Lemma thing. So suppose we have an ascending chain in J, and let A be the union of these things. We need to prove that this union is in J, and this is where we're going to use our um, the, the, the previous fact. Anyways, certainly... Um, this certainly this union is an ideal we know that um, so now assume for contradiction that a is not in j that means that a is finitely generated say by a1 through am so each of these generators must be in some index some um, a and i for some index and i choose n to be the maximum of these then by inclusion all of these generators are in that particular a n and so therefore the ideal A is contained in AN, um, but we know already that AN is contained in A since A is the union of the AIs, and therefore A is equal to AN. Oh wait, maybe maybe this isn't where we used the um, previous um, fact. So anyways, this is a contradiction since what we've proven is that um, we've assumed for contradiction that A is finitely generated, and then proven that A is equal to AN, which means that AN is, is finitely generated, um, which contradicts the fact that a n is in. Um, which contradicts the fact that a n is in j because that a n in j means that it's not finally generated. Therefore, a is in j. So each chain in j has an upper bound in j. Therefore, by Zorn's lemma, j contains a maximal element. We'll call it p. Now we're going to use our the the previous result on p since p is in j. It's a maximal element of J, so therefore um, it, it's in J. 
so it's not finitely generated. Additionally, if you have any ideal Q which properly contains P, then Q cannot be in J because otherwise, if Q, if, if you had um, an element, if you had an element, if you had an ideal which ideal which properly contained P and were in J, then that would be the, um, that would have to be the maximal element that you chose. All right, so any, so therefore Q must be finitely generated. So any ideal which properly can, so Q, so P is not finitely generated, but any ideal which properly contains P is finitely generated. Therefore, by the first part of this exercise, this condition implies that P is prime. So then P is an example of a prime ideal which is not finitely generated. And therefore, it cannot possibly be the case that every prime ideal of A is finitely generated. This establishes the contrapositive of the converse to the desired proposition. I.e., this establishes... So we've proven that if A is not Noetherian, then it is not the case that every ideal of... That ev then it is not the case that every prime ideal of A is finitely generated. And so, therefore, that's equivalent to the contrapositive, i.e., if every prime ideal of A is finitely generated, then A is Noetherian. And so we can conclude that A is Noetherian if and only if every prime ideal of A is finitely generated, and that's what we wanted.